Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. I'm with my uh, partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hold it down to four. Yes, Leslie. Yes, you're at the right place at the right time. <laughs> yep. It's like Groundhog's Day. You know, we, we really tried to be here on time yesterday. We didn't try to be here on time today. I won't give you the long story, but Tom didn't try to get here on time today. <laughs> but yesterday, we really did, and we were still two minutes late. Well, this is, this is the joke. Liz and I were in another meeting, and it was for something. And we were looking at the clock, and I made the point, and it's like, hey, you know, I've got another 30 minutes until it's 5 o'clock, and we have our Facebook Live. And Liz goes, I guess that means we have about another 45 minutes then. Because <laughs> when, when are we ever on time, right? Uh, all right, I'm going to try and pull this up so I can respond to people, Tom. You had okay. some numbers you wanted to share, I think. Yeah, the unemployment numbers came out again yesterday. The weekly uh, number of people who applied for for unemployment, that was like another 4.4 million, I believe, like 4.5 million. So the total number of people that have applied for unemployment over the last, I forget if it's five or six weeks, it's like, like pushing up on 30 million. It's just a crazy, crazy number. Never been that high before. And on a monthly basis, usually on the first Friday of each month, the Department of Labor announces, you know, the unemployment rate, you know, that percentage and, um, you know, other stats in terms of, you know, how many people are on employment and applied and so on and so forth. And it's the uh, Department of Labor number. They didn't even try to announce it today. They kind of postponed it because, you know, it's the first of May, I guess. So they would have to kind of get their numbers together and it was more than they could count. So it's like, sorry, we don't have our numbers ready to share today. We'll try to figure it out and give it to you when we get it. So, yeah, I don't know. For whatever reason, I watch that junk on a regular basis, and I've never seen them not be able to come out with a number when, when they were supposed to. So there you go. Unprecedented times. I'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. Right it, do it now, yeah. So did you see what Sarah said? Gusto came out with a really cool PPP forgiveness report yesterday. That sounds cool. Yeah, who are we talking with? Matt. Matt Ricketts just switched over to Gusto, and he was uh, was telling me about that as well. Yeah. Well, what did he say about it? Uh, is it going to do the tracking for you really easily? Or yeah. sounds cool to me. It was kind of a mixed bag with Matt, actually, and I, I forget the details, but there were certain things about Gusto that he was expecting it would do. That oh, I know what it was. He was using like Paycor, I believe, or Paychecks. And one of the things that some of the other payroll providers do is if you got some people that get paper checks, they'll actually cut those checks and distribute them. And actually, you'll get this overnight letter in the mail with paper checks you can give to people. Gusto doesn't do that. So he was complaining because he was trying to print checks in his office and he was by himself and couldn't get the printer to work. And I think I did see him with like, five checks. He's like, I've only got five checks. <laughs> so why doesn't he want to do direct deposit, Tom? I, it's a good question. You know, I guess there are some employees that want to have a paper check and in a very competitive job market. And I'm just speculating here that, you know, I mean, we still in Charleston probably print a couple of checks or at least we wasn't that long ago that we did anyway, because we had people working with us for 20 years and it was just, they wanted to check and, you know, it just legacy. So Tom, before we continue talking about work, I do have to tell you that people are making fun of you right now. Why? <laughs> because that outfit, I told you, the, those t-shirts don't match. I've told them before, y'all, that those shirts don't okay. match. So. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Are, are, are we glad we did that? Yeah. Um, now we can get to work. All right, so Sarah is saying that the report tells you where you stand and how many more employees you need or what employees need to make more to stay on target. Oh, I like that. I do like that. Matt, why didn't you share that? <laughs> I need that. 
Um, he's happy with Gusto, but he has seven people that aren't on direct deposit. Okay, that's why. I bet. Oh, so it was seven checks that you were talking about, not five. Yeah. I, I know some people don't have accounts. Seems so odd to me that people wouldn't have accounts, but I know, I know that that's actually really a thing. So I got my, um, I got my announcement from my bank today that my PPP has been approved. And so they're um, contacting me with, I don't know, I have to sign something, I guess. Don't let them put you in a box, Tom. Put that shirt back on again. <laughs> Maybe thank you can put it over that. your head, you know, and tie it. <laughs> hey, thank you. I got to be me. You're so nice, Patricia. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, I, I don't know, though. The I'm a little bit concerned. I got I got a message that said first that I had um, a deposit that was going into my account. I was like, oh, cool. This must be my PPP. But it was seventeen thousand dollars, so I was like, "What? What is this? Seventeen thousand um, dollars?" And then I'm like, I, "I don't. What is this money?" And then at first I was like, "Is this some kind of an advance on the money?" Or I, I don't understand how how it works. And then um, later I got the email from Bank of America saying that <clears throat> I had loan documents or something like that that I had to sign. I can't remember what it signed. Can play the video. Hold on. So now I'm like, did did we like apply for some funky amount? Why would they be sending me seventeen thousand dollars for anything? So kind of stressed me out. Nobody had any kind of experience like that. So were, was it like a down payment? I don't know. No. It's not in my account yet. It says it's going to be in there in two days. So, but, but why? What don't is hold it? Your, uh, you know, three days or yeah, that is true. I, I don't know. Last Tuesday, we were supposed to be getting the explanation yeah. for yeah, and we still haven't seen anything there. Uh, Leslie says if they owe child support, they don't. Oh, that's those are the people that don't want to be on direct deposit because then it gets pulled automatically. Got you. Okay, that makes sense. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. And Tricia says, uh, get out of here. Uh, yay. Well, Denise, kind of yay, right? But I don't know. What am I going to do with $17,000? That that almost. What kind, of, what kind of world are we in? The government's giving you $17,000. You're like. No, I'm kind of irritated about it, right? It's not even that I'm like. I'm like kind of irritated because really, what can I do with seventeen thousand dollars? That actually feels more of a hindrance. It feels more of a challenge. It's kind of binding me. I don't. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with this. Okay, Deborah. Oh, but two no. thousand Yeah, but do you only have two employees? I mean, if you have two employees, that would make sense. But if if you don't, then. I thought you had four or maybe even five. So that number seems funky. Um, what What is, can you lovingly force their hand to accept a payment card if your payroll processor offers such an option? Oh yeah, that's that's easier, Matt. If you can do that, that that's a good idea, Dan. So definitely like those better than, than the paper checks. I, I, I do like the paper checks for that final check so I can get the people to come in and fill out their exit interview and and give me their uniforms, you know. So I, I do like the final check. But if but, you ever have seven checks, then that kind of puts you in an awkward spot. Matt, yeah. you need to get more checks. Yeah. <laughs> no, just the final check. Everybody can come get a check. It's fine. So I make three. Debbie says I make three. What does that mean, Debbie? You make three. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you have three right now. Probably make is probably just a type yeah, of uh, not yeah. voice correct and trying to hire the fourth. Okay. Um, hi, Winta. I did not receive my PPP yet. I applied to my bank, Wells Fargo. Oh, I've heard a lot of bad stuff oh, about Wells Fargo. Oh. They keep sending me the same email every day saying they will submit it to SBA, but they're not sure if it will be accepted. What should I do? Should I be worried that the fund will run out? Liz and Tom looking good. I'm assuming you got your PPP. I did not get my PPP. I got some random 
little funky amount. Tom did get PPP money, so he's working oh, it. Much, but for for others, no. And we're right. really kind of running out of money in some areas. So it really kind of need money. Yeah. So we were talking about this yesterday. Um, went to um, some places to apply our PayPal. Lendio isn't accepting anymore. Do you remember Facebook is still? Hey, Bridget. Uh, do you remember the other one, Tom? I didn't write it down. Square, I think, is taking them. Square? Square. Square? Yeah. So these are some places. And you can apply multiple places, Winta. Just keep um, applying. Um, just don't, don't accept two. <laughs> That's the only caveat there. Okay, so Ginger's loving your shirt, Tom. You know why, though? I just want to be clear. Ginger, you're loving it because you just got on. You didn't see what he was pairing it with. It was the pairing that was causing the problem. Yeah, my, 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 my shirt, my uh, flannel shirt didn't match. This is one of my favorite shirts, though. This is this is China Cat Sunflower for you, you Grateful Dead folks out there. Uh, it reminds me of, anybody watch Survivor? It reminds me of Rupert. I know some of you are going to know. Oh, yeah, cabbage. cabbage. Cabbage cabbage was the other one. And I heard really good things about cabbage after we got off this call. I heard like three different people saying that they'd had good luck with cabbage processing really quickly. So that that's the one I was trying to remember. I, I would do that. I'd jump on that one too, right away. Um, oh, Heather loves the shirt too. Everybody loves the shirt. Actually, oh. I do love that shirt. I, oh. I do just with the plaid. <laughs> Heather, Heather and I, you know, her, her, her husband's a big Grateful Dead fan. Has a cooler with a Grateful Dead sticker that he's had since his youth. Then. Don't get me started on that cooler, Tom. <laughs> there, 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 there was a, there was a, an, an, an igloo cooler like the same style that uh, had like the Grateful Dead bears on it. That it's uh, they're selling them. I, I noticed it last week, and it's raising money for I guess. COVID-19 relief, and I sent her the link, and she uh, said she was going to buy one. Not to replace the cooler, just kind of as a spare oh. backup. Yes, supplement. Yeah. So got kids, yeah. So what else is going on in your world? I, I shared a, um, a graphic with Tom yesterday, but we've just been so busy, we neither one of us can even find where, where it was. Uh, the graphic was of all of the different states in the country and who was opening, who was um, partially opening, who was, and had dates uh, connected. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's awesome based on the most up-to-date information. But if anybody's seen that, let us know. I'd love to uh, be able to find that. Let's try to dig um, it up. Yeah, we yeah. can give us something to do Monday. Yeah. Uh, credit unions, uh, I, I'm not sure I, uh, how credit unions are working. Anybody have good luck with uh, a credit union? I have, I have, I bank at two different credit unions, but I didn't apply at either one of them. Um, you know what I didn't do? I have multiple companies. I only applied for PPP funds for one. I don't know why. Well, now you know what you can do more. Yeah, Go to cabbage, yeah. apply. cabbage it is. I'm doing it. Um, do you know if PPP payroll is the pay period or when the check was written? Do you know if PPP payroll? Oh, pay when period? it's going to be forgiven. Yeah. When, when the, the check. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. No, it's it's the for the the eight week period is like when the paychecks are are are, are, are written. So, like if you get your money on Wednesday, then two days later, that's the first pay period of your eight week period, even though those people, the work they did, you know, the week prior, you even knew you were getting the money. That's kind of what happened to us. Now there is an interesting thought. And I've actually heard some people speculate that you can do this. Um, I'm not sure what the ruling would be, but once you get down to like the last week, take check that would be going out the following week and pull it forward and pay people two time for, for two weeks at the same time. I don't know if that would be acceptable. I don't know what the bank would say. I don't know anything, but it would just be another way of getting another week's worth of pay. That's the way the IRS works for, for, for like tax purposes. And I do know that you can 
do some things at the end of the year to pay a bunch of bills in advance to get it in December. Or if you want to kick, you know, if you want your numbers to look better, take a bunch of bills and wait and write the checks in January. So you might be able to squeeze that last pay period in, you know, the last, you know, put two pay periods together, maybe talk to your accountant, but. Uh, and, and bottom line is worst case scenario is it's just not forgiven. It's not that you weren't going to pay it anyway, so might as well try, right? Nobody's um, going to complain about getting paid early. Yeah. Ah, uh, gosh, I do have an employee that would complain about that. She really resists uh, weekly pay. She does not want weekly pay. Uh, all right, Winter wants to know, Tom, does workers' compensation count as a payroll expense for the PPP? Should I include workers' compensation on the PPP loan application? We were looking at the regs earlier this week and they do not explicitly say yes to that. They address health care and vacation. They address a lot of different things. They, they, they address local and state taxes. They don't say anything literally about workers' comp insurance. So we don't know. It didn't. That's what Leslie's saying. It doesn't. It doesn't say it does. So the presumption. She, said is she didn't. Leslie said she didn't. Tom. Right. Okay. Yeah. But but yeah, we we read it over and we read it on the call on the Facebook Live and and we couldn't see anything. So. I, I do think, though, that it's not going to we, we also said that it's not going to affect any decisions you make over that eight week period because you're going to hire people and you're going to work people and you're going to pay your workers comp insurance. Somebody's going to pay it either you or it's going to come out of the grant. So just go ahead and do it. Once you get to the end of it, there's going to be a stack of paperwork you're going to be filling out to, 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 to reconcile all of that. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll find you'll find out once you're you're having those discussions with your bank. What about federal taxes? I guess that would be the employer portion. Yep, we talked about that on Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Do you recall what the answer to that was? Uh, I think it it was basically the same exact answer that we just gave around the. Yeah, Let me see. While we're talking, I'll see if I can actually find the uh, that 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 reg. Okay. So, uh, other than that, for those of you that are um, that have your PPP money, fill us in. What are you doing? What are your people doing? I, I doubt there are very many of you that are just having your people stay at home. So, are do you have any uh, creative ways to get people to um, or, or to be able to spend that money on your people? What are you doing, anybody? I know that. Uh, some examples of things I've heard, people are putting their spouses, their children on payroll. I know that, not not little kids, y'all, right? Like like working age kids. Um, I have heard that about um, just having them do whatever kind of work that they can come up with, uh, training, et cetera, but giving them some type of a bonus. Mainly they are busy doing discounted cleanings. Discounted cleanings is, I think that's the most popular right now, right? Um, uh, are you doing discounted cleanings for everybody, Sarah, or just for um, frontline workers? Tell us, tell us a little bit more about that. How do you get them off of a thousand dollars a week? Um, so we talked a little bit about this yesterday, Leslie. Uh, they have to come back to work. In, in most states, not all, we, we don't know about some of these other states where this isn't true. So, of course, you're going to want to check in California. But in most states, if you um, have worked for them and you call them to work and they don't come in, then they are no longer are eligible for unemployment. Uh, and, does, and did we decide Tom, after talking about this that they're also not eligible for the federal portion? We did. Right. So and that's in most states, but not apparently not all. I haven't seen any of the actual 
regs for the states that that's not true in. Um, if anybody has that, I would love to, to read that over. All right, let's see what Tom's got here. Here it is again. So, go ahead, Tom. Payroll costs. You know, this is this is copy and paste out of you know the the regs, which are defined as salaries, wages, commissions, payments on cash tips, payments for vacation, parental, family, medical or sick leave, severance, payment for retirement benefits, payment of group health care benefits, including insurance premiums, and that's insurance health care, not other types of insurance like workers' comp, and payment of state and local taxes. I do not see anything there about the employer portion of like the social security and, and you of know, the that, federal. Yeah. And I, I would say not to federal because they specifically do call out state and local. Right. Mm. So if, if there was, um, if the federal tax was included, I'm pretty sure it would have, it would have been put here. But it still gets down to, you know, you're not going to make different decisions in terms of who you're hiring and what jobs you're going to be doing and how many hours are people going to be working based on that. So just go ahead and try to make as much money as you can over that eight week period. And once it's all said and done, produce, you know, the documentation. And I would ask the question again and you just, you know. You never know. The, the rules aren't written clearly specifically, entirely. <laughs> so a lot of stuff is still up for grabs. All right, let's see. Deborah says she's working her people. Um, they're not working 40 hours, but she's paying them 40 hours. Sarah, 50% off deep cleans and the first regular clean when they sign up for weekly or biweekly. Okay. Um, Bridget's got her people working. She had one paint part of her office, had plans for calling clients we don't have back yet. She finally put her husband on the payroll. She hasn't done any discounted cleanings. Um, about 20 gift cards to give to frontline workers. Um, if received, notice the SBA approved my PPP, but don't have it yet. I'm thinking she needs I. She received her idle advance, Carol did, and uh, can be rolled into the PPP. If I use the I, if I use the idle for payroll before receiving PPP, will that be forgivable? Should I wait until I get PPP when eight weeks is to begin? Yeah, you got to wait for the eight weeks. Does using the idle begin the eight weeks? No, it doesn't. You know, Jenny's asking a question here where this is this is relevant. She's said that she didn't see bonuses mentioned on our definition. Doesn't literally say bonuses. It, but it's a payroll cost. You know, somewhere in this whole general thing of salaries, wages, and commissions, I, you know, I don't know. That might be one for your 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 your, your CPA and, and and hope that they know. Payments of cash tips. How yeah. does that work? How do how, like restaurants or like I don't. They send the tips to the office. I, I don't. I don't know what. How how well, is that? A lot of times, people put the tip on the credit card, and it goes through your. You know, you have to include it on. Yeah, your, on your report. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's almost like it's double dipping because the tip already came from the customer, presumably. Right. So if they're reimbursing you for a tip that the customer already paid for, that doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, that's money in your pocket. You, you made money. Yeah, that's not even our money. How are we getting reimbursed for something that we never got in the first place? So you know how you didn't get that 20 bucks? We're going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> that's why I'm like, that, that's just not really making sense to me. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, but they slapped this law together pretty fast. And I mean, yeah. this is a leg level. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Winter wants to know if you're open, Tom. You want to talk to her about what's going on, branches and We're status, open. all that good stuff? And we are opening um, in Georgia next Monday. And, you know, so far, so far, so good. You know, most of the customers are, you know, tired of not having their home cleaned. Uh, there's still a few that, you know, want to wait a little bit. But, uh 
you know, we're cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I, I think that most people are finding out that that a lot more people are ready to have cleaning done than they may have thought was going to be the case. But I think people are just wanting if things to go as much back to normal as they can, too. I mean, it's just everything's so funky. I, I think a lot of you know that my mom's in the hospital right now. And so she's been in the hospital since um, a little over a week now. And we haven't known what's been going on with her. Um, she had elevated heart rate and blah, blah, blah. So normal, normal stuff in elderly people, right? Heart, the, the heart begins to fail. Um, and so th that's been going on. But then she started having this other problem um, where she, she ended up getting a tear in her esophagus. And so that's what's like extending this amount of time that she's in the hospital. And I was talking to her last night. And this seems like it's off topic, but it's really not. <laughs> I was talking to her last night. And she was like almost hallucinating, like talking really oddly, enough so that I got a hold of her nurse and said, Hey, something's up with my mom. She needs fluid. I don't know. She needs something. She's kind of, I'm not right. And the nurse said, No, you know what? This is one of the things that we're seeing right now. The people are so insular. They don't see anyone. My mom's been in there, you know, a little over a week and no visitors, no social contact at all. Just people coming in, take your, take your stuff and, and go. And they're going a little crazy. They're going a little stir crazy. Who would have thought, right? How interesting is that? So they're, the hospital is actually trying to figure out a way to get people out of their rooms and like wheel them down halls and just have them see something else than this little room. So I was thinking how everybody is feeling that. If that's happening after just a week, it makes sense why the people that are stuck in their homes, they've been there for a month, homeschooling their kids, you know, not, not being able to get out at all, especially those extroverts. They're just like, oh, I need something. So. The whole thing, I know this is a very long way of saying, I think it's, it's a, a social problem that we're having just because of so much lockdown in so many different ways. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I went into the office today. I had to do a couple of things. And we're wearing masks in the office now, so I put the mask on. And I don't have a lot of experience wearing the mask. And you know me, I'm like drinking coffee all day. And I have my mask on, and I'm making my coffee, and I'm oblivious to the fact. And I'm I'm on a on a, a Zoom meeting, you know. And I see myself, and I see myself going with my mask on. And it's like this isn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that's real similar to this, right? Where are my freaking glasses? Right, <laughs> real similar. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry you guys. Um, bringing it down with my mom. She's gonna be fine. She's fine now. She's doing much, much better. So uh, not to worry. She'll be going home real soon here. Well, that'll be good. Um, and, and yeah, thank, thanks for keeping her in your prayers. But, but she is doing fine now. Uh, there was a question about, uh, where is it? So far, oh, so that's what it was. Sarah was saying that she's uh, up to 70, 75% of revenue. I love that, right? And, and such great timing. Um, whereas we've been been about 50% for the last month. We're still confirming it's hopeful. Oh, yeah. So that's another thing I really wanted to talk about today. I'm so glad that you brought that up, Sarah. For those of you that are, um, you've got everybody on your schedule and you're starting to work your days, don't, don't stick with your normal pattern of whatever it is, calling a day before or two, even two days before. Get everybody on the phone, you guys. Find out, get confirmations from everybody because what you're going to find is you're going to have too many people scheduled to work uh, because you think your schedule is good now. You're open, so you're just assuming, whoo, we're ready to go. But a lot of people are finding out that they're getting all of those skips in the morning. Skip, 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 skip in the morning. And then they're, that, you know, that big chaos of having all the skips and too many people. And right now it's even harder because your people are, um, distancing so they're outside and uh so get in 
touch with all of your people at least for like the next two two weeks. So it's my recommendation. You don't have to do that, of course, but I'm seeing a lot of people struggling with that. But if you have your PPP money and you've got your people at the office and you've had some skips, it's a wonderful time to do some training. Yeah, wonderful time to do training. Uh, let's see. When does the clock start with the eight-week PPP loan? The minute it hits your bank. When the monies hit your bank, that's when it starts. Um, once received, loan or approved? Nope. Once you get it, get it, get it, get it. So if you're working with a bank, the bank has 10 days to disperse those funds when it's approved. You know, if you can get to your bank ahead of time and say, listen, don't just slam those monies in my account. I want to have a discussion with you. And you, I mean, it depends on your situation, but you want them to put that money in the bank that gives you the best opportunity to squeeze eight big payrolls out of it where you're cleaning homes. So if you're cleaning homes right now, that's not that big a deal. But if you've been shut down or partially shut down, you're probably better off taking as many of those 10 days as you can to give you a chance to get people lined up and customers' jobs booked. Yeah, more is better. Uh, Shannon, I'm sorry, you can't concentrate. You feel like you're losing it. So I'll tell you that for a lot of people, um, that that's how, how things have been. But the good news is most of the people that are going into that down cycle also come back out of it without too uh, long of a wait. One of the things that you might think about doing if you're not on some um, more of these Zoom calls where you can actually see people and interact with them, not like this one where you're just typing, but you can get on some Zoom calls with your family or your good friends or something like that where you see their face, see their, see them moving, you'll, you'll find yourself beginning to feel a little bit better, maybe. Give it a shot anyway. Um, I love, Denise, that you're doing the daily exercising classes with your mom. I really wanted to do that, too. I wanted to do something with her over FaceTime, but she just couldn't do it. But now she's going to be home. It's going to be awesome. Um, according to one of our banks locally, the eight weeks starts when you sign and not receive. Is that accurate? That is not the information that we have gotten or that we have seen in writing and that we've pulled up multiple times. Yeah. The information that we've gotten is when it hits your bank. So um, find out why they're saying that. I, I don't know why. Get get a little bit more information, Carol. We do know that are doing it differently. I mean, it's all over the board. Each bank kind of has their own rules. So, I mean, yeah, you want to have that discussion, but just about – to, without an exception, everybody else's bank and the understanding was it starts the day that the monies are physically in the bank. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense because how can you be on the clock if it takes them, they could take up to 10 days, 10 days. to put it in there. And how can you bring people back to work when you don't even have the money yet? Yeah. Just trust them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. We see how well that's been working out. Oh, Shannon. Okay, so it's when you're wearing a mask. Oh, I get that. Well, definitely get on some Zooms without your mask. Do something like that if, if that'll be helpful. And you could also do, do just a, like a, a quick, oh, sorry. My, this is so awesome, you guys. My daughter's mother-in-law made us a whole bunch of masks and sent them to us. How kind is that, right? Mother-in-laws, they're awesome. Anyway, you could do a little, I got to do something. You got to make yourself feel better there, Shannon. Uh, for all clients that have skipped all of their cleanings, we are charging a $40 upcharge. Is that we're also pushing initial cleanings for $150 over the cleaning fees or a disinfecting HTP after the cleaning for $49, $59, $69, $79 fees for on top of their cleaning. That's on you, Tom. Wow. Well, high touch, HTP must be high touch something, right? Points. High touch points. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, if you can sell that and, and you know, explain to your clients that this is extra value that, that we're creating and this isn't part of our normal cleaning protocol, but in this COVID-19 world, you know, you're really, this is how you get maximum value out of the service we're providing. I, I love that. I love that. Uh, and Heather, I have a question. So you say that you're charging forty dollars for the an upcharge for the people that have skipped all of their cleanings. 
but then you're also pushing an initial cleaning for 150 over the cleaning fee. So is that 150 plus the 40? Tell us a little bit more about how that works. Okay, this is this is good good stuff here, you guys. Hey, Liz, Linda, can I, let's, yeah. Can I show us something here? Which I think is really kind of cool. Um, Please. Yesterday. Uh, Vicki Coleman was asking about some of our training programs and wanted to know if we had Spanish versions. And sadly, at this point in time, we don't. I mean, I took three years of Spanish in high school and found it a struggle. And I don't think we don't we don't have that skill set in our toolbox at the moment. But um, Robin Murphy had one of her employees, oops, I didn't do this right. What had one of her employees shoot a video on how to uh, don and how, how to doff gloves actually. And I put that up in YouTube and I just want to show it because I think it's just really cool. It's on the modern cleaning um, YouTube channel. It's over here and I took the English version and copied and pasted it in Google to give me the uh, the, the translation, but. En este video explicaré cómo quitarse los guantes correctamente. Primero, peñizca la parte externa del guante ubicado como un guante. Quitar el guante con el cual yo lo hago esta mano. Después, coloca los dos dedos dentro del guante y nuevamente lo jalo de esta manera. De una vez lo puedes agarrar así y lo puedes echar en la basura. Siempre recuerda que una vez que hayas hecho este proceso, asegúrese de lavar o desinfectarse las manos. Ah, este I love it. Isn't that awesome? Yes, I love that, Tom. Doesn't it sound so much better in Spanish? Yeah. It, it sounds prettier in Spanish. <laughs> She's got those pretty nails too. I'm like, ooh, that's nice. So, you know, we, we, yeah. we need to, and we, we aspire to be able to produce more, you know, bilingual material. We, 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 we appreciate the need. And Robin, thank you for that. That was cool. Uh, super nice. Um, also on here, I love this idea that um, for, for those of you guys that are looking at the comments, uh, look at what Linda did over here. She sent an email out to all her people and she gave them an option, A, B, or C. A, don't come back, we're not ready. B, come back, but I can wait a week or two, or C, no, no. And she says 95% of the clients responded. I think that is really amazing. That is a That's an great, incredible response rate, right? truly. Right? What do you think uh, about people to do? You know, I could send an email out saying, hey, you know, I'm giving away free pies tomorrow. Just let me know you want one. And I'm not going to get a 95% response rate. It's like, I'll bring it no. to you and leave it at your house. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I just got a notification right here that our stay-at-home order has been extended for a month. Who's that? People are going to lose their minds. This Washington. That's the governor. Oh, that's from you. Your Washington wow. State stay at home order extended through May 31st. People are going to lose their minds. Also, we're the capital. So, one of the things that we're dealing with is all of these protesters on the capital, on the capital grounds every day without masks. Oh, that's making people crazy. This It's a crazy time here in Olympia. It's crazy here. All right, so um, we saw I, Heather did give us an answer here. Um, oh wait, before we get to that answer, let's hit Bridget. So this is a question I haven't heard before, Tom. So the PPP is going by payroll date or we, we report payroll or the payroll check date is deposited into the employee's account. So we know it's when they're actually paid, but I guess it wouldn't have anything to do. I guess it would be when we wrote the checks. It would be because the, not the, It would be the date. It would be what? It would be the date that they are formally paid, whatever the date in your accounting system says that that payment was dispersed. 
like people do direct deposit technically in your QuickBooks, if you will, it'll show that the payment was made on Friday, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, a, that, I mean, that is an interesting question. How maybe, I guess it depends how you do your payroll. Maybe you can squeak it in yeah. a bit. Yeah, you might be able to get a little bit earlier. I yeah. don't I, I don't really know. That's a good question. We haven't had that one yet. Uh, all right. And so Heather's answer to her question about um, if she charging 150 plus the 40 for 190 for an initial, but she says she's pushing for the initial 150. If they give her pushback, she's only going to charge them 40. I like that strategy, right? People feel like they're getting a good deal and they feel like, yay, and she still got her 40 bucks out of them. She didn't go from 150 down to zero. So yay, Heather, good job. Um, Sarah did the same thing as Linda. So that answers your question, Winta. Um, that we have at least two people on here, Sarah and Linda, that sent out that email, the ABC email. Um, try not to be Try not to be too nervous about your customers canceling your service forever. Not very many people have seen that. The, the only, not the only, but the majority of the people that are canceling service as for two reasons that I've seen. One is if your company was closed and there was another company that was easy to move to that was open, that's one. And then the second reason is if they have an immune immunocompromised person living in the home, then they're like, I, I just cancel. I don't, I don't even know if when this is ever going to clear up. So those are really the only two cases I've seen uh, uh, of the customers just flat out canceling. And I'm reaching out. I'm recommending that everybody reach out as soon as your stay at home order is lifted. May 31st for me, just found out, then I'm recommending that you contact every single one of those people that cancel service and bring them back because they still value cleaning. They valued cleaning a month ago. They valued cleaning two months ago. They value cleaning again still now. So even though they canceled, you might be able to talk into it. There's ways. Hey, hey Liz. Um, you okay. Can, you can yeah. say that you know your stay-at-home order is going to be lifted May 31st. All you really need is to in place until May 31st. Yeah. Yeah. I said at least yeah. May 31st for me. Thank you, Tom, for giving me that little bit of optimism there. Just, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's an unprecedented event, so we just don't <laughs> Uh, all right, so Winta, you can scroll up to see Linda's email, but you can also go down to, and Sarah just posted, or just down one, Sarah posted that all she asked them is, are you ready or pause? And so she, are you ready to come back in May? And pause if you're not. And then they're expecting to come back in June. So uh, she gave them two options, and that, that can work really, really well. Uh, if you give people two options in, in a situation like this, they're going to have to figure out which one do I want. So give them options that you're okay with. All right, hey Tom, you need to um, share about the training. I had a few people email me overnight about the training. Um, this is for the... Um, PHC training, yeah? Yep, we can do that. Yes, today was PHC training. So we have been working um, really hard on this. I have a question for you guys. Uh, so this training you know is going to be available as of noon on Wednesday. Uh, well, the first module will be available. There's seven modules. The uh, but I, Yeah, the first class. Sorry, Tom, thank you. The first class will be available Wednesday at noon Eastern time. So nine o'clock, our, our time, I guess, y'all. Uh, 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 Pacific Northwesters, Leslie, that's that's you and me, right? Um, so uh, my, my question is, do you guys think it would be helpful to, Tom does not know I'm gonna ask this and he does not love it when I do this, but doing it anyway. Do you guys think it would be helpful to have uh, maybe a portion of the class live or even one of the classes live 
um, just to be able to see what's, what's in it, how they work, et cetera. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments. And no, it's the HCP. No, it's not. It's the PHC. Professional. <laughs> Professional house cleaning. It's PHC, professional house cleaning. And I know the only reason I keep wanting to say PCH is because PCH highway. Anybody else having that? So I know it starts with professional because that is the main thing that we're really pushing here is professionalism in the industry. Um, go, go through the topics, Tom. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's going to be helpful. Yeah. There's going to be one, it's one program called the professional house cleaning program there are seven classes uh you can see where they are basically it's the role of professional house cleaner which gets into i mean this is what we were talking about earlier today right les we were kind of putting yeah. the, 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 the finishing touches on this about you know what professionalism is and it's really broader i mean we're looking at professionalism in a broader sense than just house cleaning because when we just narrow it to house cleaning, it's almost like, you know, there's house cleaning and then there's all these other real things that are professional. And we don't want people to be thinking that way because if we choose to to to, to be professional and choose to learn the information and adopt the behaviors that, that we need to be professional, the skills that it takes to be professional, then I mean, we can make it tough. So that's a big part of what the first first part of the program is and then we kind of get into you know a lot of the other major aspects that it would be important for every uh, professional house cleaner to know we get into safety we get into to health and you know what hygienic cleaning is we uh, get into the, 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 the chemistry and the physics of, of, of cleaning in class four a lot of about being a professional is about understanding the why behind what it is that you're doing um, Liz, you've got a great a great analogy with that. You want to talk to us about ham bots? The, the M bots? Ham, the ham. The ends oh, of the ham. yeah. So uh, a lot of you have probably heard the story about my mom moving up to Washington from California and spending um, um, Christmas with us. And we were putting a ham into the oven and I went to cut the ends off the ham. And my, my mom was like, why are you cutting ends off the ham? And I was like, what do you mean? You always cut the ends off the ham. She's like, oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, Grandma always cuts the ends off the ham. I, I wonder why we cut the ends off the ham when we're like, I don't know. They probably taste bad. They're probably tough. You see how they are on the ends? They're probably really tough. They're probably not good. And so we ended up finally calling my grandma to find out, Grandma, what, what's up with the ends of the ham? Do you know why do we cut it off? Don't ask me why we didn't um, ask Google, because that probably would have been smarter. But I'm glad that we asked my grandma, because my grandma said, what are you guys talking about? You mean because I had that little bitty pan? So this is not a true story, but that's the way I always tell the story. Um, ends of the ham is, go ahead, Tom, from there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the why. I mean, in order to be professional, in order to really embrace the idea of, of doing it with using the standard operating procedure in, in, in the appropriate way and appreciating the value of a scope of work. You have to understand the why behind all of that. And a lot of times we miss that. A lot of training programs miss that. It just gets into the what. Follow the directions on the bottle. You know, remove the soil, you know, apply the disinfectant, keep it moist for 10 minutes, wipe it off. Well, that's the why, but a lot of times people don't do it that way. But if they understand the why behind it, if they understand the chemistry and what happens if you don't do it that way and all the good benefits, if you do do it that way, you're going to get, you know, a lot better outcomes. So that's what we're talking about there on the science side. We're going to talk about contents and surfaces and all the things you find in a home and the various ways you clean them and the various ways that you don't clean them in order to to protect them and 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 preserve their value. We're gonna talk about procedures, methods, productivity. Uh, the last class is gonna to be tools and equipment. Um, you know, the whole duration, all seven classes together, we, we, we believe are gonna to be about seven hours. Can't tell you for sure. We haven't 
pulled all seven classes together. We've been working on this for years, by the way. It's just, yeah, I think I, I, I've shared previously, it's like one of those projects that we, you know, had it 70% done and just never finished it. And when this whole COVID-19 thing broke out, it's like, you know what? The time is right and this is necessary and we're not cleaning anything anyway. Let's go ahead and finish this and, and, and make it available and, and, and do what we can to promote professionalism within the entire industry. So that's kind of kind of the way that works. And we're doing some, some we want to make this accessible. Well, well, before you get into the pricing, Tom, if you don't mind, um, I, I did want to say for those of you that see some of these topics and you're like, ah, procedures, methods, and productivity, what, what if they don't do it my way? I don't want them teaching my people some funky way. I know that um, sometimes you've seen training programs where they're teaching you how to do it the way they do it. This program is not like that. This program is not prescriptive. It is about professionalizing the industry, and it talks more about how to provide professional service versus providing, you know, professional house cleaning. Uh, we're not saying you've got to clean with this this type of vacuum this way. That that's not what the conversation is about here. Now we are talking about. The, Go ahead, Tom. You no, know, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. That's a, that's a, a, a really important point. You know, it doesn't matter if you do teams or solos. It doesn't matter if you use upright vacuums, canisters, backpacks. This is, you know, transcends all that. You know, we talk about the different types of equipment and the pros and cons and why you might want to use one or the other. Um, but we don't prescribe and we certainly don't talk about you need this brand and this is good this is bad because that's getting into the what right okay and we don't get into the what a lot it's a lot more about the why and once you understand the why you can apply this everywhere i use the analogy that this is like the driver's ed manual and the driver's ed manual is good whether you're driving in the country whether you're driving in the city whether you know regardless of what make or model uh, vehicle you're driving. The driver's ed manual applies to all of that. So this is kind of like the driver's ed manual made for the, the the cleaning professionals who are out there cleaning the homes for you guys every day. And there's more you would layer over this in terms of, you know, this is how this particular manufacturer says that you want to use this particular product you guys are still going to have to do that because there's in, you know, hundreds of different products out there. So you can't get into all of that in this type of, of, of program. This is more laying the groundwork that everybody needs to know. And then in your own company, you fill in those finer points of the things that fit your specific uh, standard operating procedure. That's great, Tom. Thanks. Um, Ruth is saying her suggestion is a sample of the first module, maybe five or ten minutes. Uh, and maybe, and, and I'm not sure which class would make sense to do the first five or ten minutes. Maybe, maybe we'll think about that. Especially, she's saying um, to preview before purchasing in bulk would be helpful. So, and, and that makes sense to me. If you have 50 employees, you want to be able to get that great discount. But you definitely would probably want to make sure that it's it's worth the the, the money before then. Yeah, good so, thinking, Bruce. So I guess Liz, you just volunteered us to pulling uh, something together that we can share Monday, huh? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> well, that's okay. We got a weekend. So this is our favorite time to work, right? That's right. We can get a lot done this weekend. We don't have any other work to do. I can take all day tomorrow to do three hours worth of work. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about that because we talked about it so much last week. I was while it was the weekend last weekend, I'm like, why is it so much better? It's because there's no other work. So we can just work on a project. You can spend a lot of time. You know, how, how often do any of you guys have like four hours to commit to one project? Like just four hours. That just doesn't happen. Phone rings, somebody needs something. You have to do this other thing. You got a webinar, you got a meeting, right? I never get four hours, but on the weekend, ah, oh, bliss. I get these large chunks of time that I can do what I feel like is, is higher quality work 
when I can put more more of my brain to it. So I love the weekend. Looking forward to it. I'm creating a PowerPoint for one of these this weekend, y'all. So be glad I'm going to get this chunk of time that I can do a high quality product. You don't have nearly as many people on the weekend looking to you for help, assistance, guidance. You know, being the lead, you know, being the leader is a twenty-four-seven job, but a lot more Monday through Friday than it is Saturday and Sunday for for, for business oh, yeah. ours. Um, we are doing some uh, some some promotional pricing uh, for like the the pre-sale events, and there's. Two different ways that you can enroll. If you want to take the class as an individual student, you can go here and enroll right through the, the classroom itself and put in a credit card. And it says ninety nine dollars, but you have a discount code here of that says pre sale. You enter that in if you're registering over here only, and it'll take fifty percent off. So it's actually forty nine fifty. I guess for the next uh, several days till Wednesday. Once we start, once we launch the first class, the the, the presale discount, I guess by definition, would have to go away because it's not a presale anymore, right? We're actually, you know, are doing the class. Well, remember, you guys, Tuesday. He's saying Wednesday, but I don't want to have the same problem that we had with the with the last course that we that we presented. So. Tuesday, because the Pacific Northwest, if you start your day at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, which I know I'm looking here on uh, the people that are here, and I know at least one of you doesn't start your day until 10, that's too late. You will have missed it. So Tuesday, not Wednesday. If, All right. Sorry, Tom. If, no, that's fine. And if you want to sign up multiple people for the class, you go over here and... The 50% discount is already built in. So you're basically buying it through Shopify. So if you like have 10 people, you can do that and you can update. And I didn't show you, but the, let me go over here. Um, The bulk pricing is part of the process. You go down here, six to 15 courses, it's 15% off. Uh, the next bundle of 10 is 25, 26 to 50, it's 35% off. Anything over 50, it's 50% off. And whatever that price is, you get 50% more off of that. So. You know, if you're getting 51 courses, you can get them for as little as $24 and change, a little bit less than $25 a piece if you're a larger company. And like here's an example of what it would be if you're getting 10 courses, normally be 990, but it's got a $569 discount and the actual price is uh, $420 and change. Once the pre uh, the, the the pre-sale promotion is over you'd be paying eight hundred and forty dollars for those ten classes so if you want to do this we really want you to do this now rather than, than later yeah uh winter we just went over the topics if you go to moderncleaning.com there you'll see two boxes on that main page it's the one on the right and tom's showing it again here and when you click on that, it shows you the topics that are covered in the class. Um, and so I wanted you guys to know, for those of you that have a Spanish speaking workforce, the reason why I wanted to do at least a little something live on Monday is because uh, I want those of you that have that, that workforce to be able to see what the program's going to be like and to be able to judge for yourself whether or not um, you want to buy 30, 30 of these for people that you're not sure they're going to be able to understand it, comprehend it, if it's not going to be clear enough. So uh, that's why I really want to do a little something on Monday so that you can see 
what what the program is like and get a, a real clear understanding. Want, I want to give everybody a chance to be able to buy in bulk. If you have to wait until Wednesday to to buy one so that you can want the, so that you can go through the program, then it's too late to get that bulk discount. So anyway, that that's my thinking there. How about how about if we uh, put a put a deck together that just got some of the the bullet points, some of the highlights out of several classes, just kind of a mashup, just to kind of get a flavor for 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 the tone and 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 level of content. Yeah, that I would love that idea, Tom. Thank you. That that would be perfect. Yeah, you know, like all seven courses, just a, like a slide from each or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try to be mindful I, not wear this shirt with <laughs> this shirt. Yeah, I'll I'll wear something that's not well, too loud that's too. Really, that's really a shame though because these are my two favorite shirts. I just can't. we know you wear them together all the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, Shannon, you just signed up for the new course. Yeah, you're gonna love it. This this course is um, so. I, I mean, I, I guess I'm biased because I'm working on the course also. Um, but I've worked on a lot of courses. A lot of you have seen me do presentations throughout the years for the last at least ten years. I have been creating presentations, creating education, creating training, um, the foundations course, etc. This is the best training I've seen out there so far. And, and you, know, you know, we should explain our team that's working on this. People, people need to know this, that, you know, my wife, Janice, I don't know, some of you may know or some of you don't. We might even drag her in this on Monday just so you guys can, can get to know her a little bit. She's really kind of the curator of all this information, and this has been her project for years, but... Liz is Liz is helping us pull this together. Um, you guys know Matt Ricketts. He's been uh, a regular on, on on a number of these Facebook lives. Matt is uh, a really talented guy. You guys know that, and he's uh, helping us with with some of the material, and he's going to be presenting some of the material as well. And Joe Walsh, we haven't had Joe on here in the last week or so, have we? He's been busy. Well, he just he just opened up. So yeah, he's been busy. Really yeah, but but you know, in all honesty, Joe's one of the most uh, talented uh, business owners I know in any industry, and uh, he's all in on the project. So we've got some 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 really good people that are are helping us pull this together, and uh, you know, you'll get to know them all more over the next several weeks as we we, we go through this program. Yeah. Uh, so you have another person loving your outfit here. Tell Thank you. Really. They love. She says like. So Ruth says she likes yeah. your outfit. Yeah. All right. Well, we are running uh, three oh nine. Tom, we try to get out of here by. It's an hour and two minutes because we're always late. But I think we're doing okay. You guys yeah. don't have any more questions. Okay, it's Friday. We know what that means. You really right. need to kind of shut it down. Get some rest. Um, it's a long, long race. We're going to be dealing with, uh, you know, COVID-19 for, for, for a long time. This isn't going away anytime soon, but that's okay because we're doing the things that we need to do to make the smart business moves. And this is, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for us. So let's, uh, just keep doing the things that we're doing and, and, and we're going to make it and, you know, wind up in a better place than I think a lot of us are going to be able to turn this into an opportunity to make our businesses much stronger and better than they were before. You know, the whole competitive Absolutely. Field before you're going to change. Um, Absolutely. And try to get that four hours of work in tomorrow. Un a nice block of time. Locked. Love time blocking. We'll, we'll see you Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we'll have a, a mashup uh, uh, uh I guess an abridged version of several of the classes, just kind of give you an idea of uh, what it's about. And I hope you guys can make it. Now you all know what Tom will be doing tomorrow in his four hour block, <laughs> creating that thing that I just threw on him right now. So if it looks like uh, Tom is like, wow, what are we gonna do? 
I want you to see how quickly he pivoted. He had no idea I was going to say that. And now here we are. He's going to put something together for us and we'll have it on Monday. Yay. Thank you, Tom. All right. Thanks, you guys. We'll uh, see you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.